Hello and welcome to Rocky Marciano Stadium for tonight's matchup between the Catholic Memorial Knights and your Brockton Boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson and I'm joined alongside my broadcast partner, the Wishbone himself, Alex Wish. Alex, Catholic Memorial, really the whole Catholic Conference, football powerhouses. They come in, they dominate anybody they play. What do you think Brockton has to do to uh, hang tough with the Catholic Conference and see them tonight? Well, you were telling me before the game, uh, they got a good passing game. And uh, I think I'm going to try to pass tonight, but I think running, I was thinking before the game, it was probably running game you should focus on tonight. Um, obviously, they're a great team, and I can assume that they're high-powered defense. So, you know, on a wet night tonight, I would stick with the ground. The ground is probably your best option going forward, trying to stick with CM throughout the rest of the game. You know, not making them go, like, you know, run away pretty much. Brockton usually a very good ground and pound offense. This year, not so much. They've really tested out the arm of Returning quarterback Jose Montero Jr. is coming off a few torn ACLs, a few back injuries. He's back. He's looking better than ever. He's wearing a brace on his left leg, but it hasn't slowed him down a bit. Do you think he gives it to Rosen Pierre and feeds the, the backfield of the boxers, or do you think he keeps it himself uh, for a few goes? Yeah, you know, on a wet night, it can be tricky against a really tough team. You know, I've, I've been to plenty of Brockton High games when I was a student. And on a wet night, it can be really rough to catch the ball. Um, we, you know, we. I'm always surprised by uh, the Brockton boxes, and you know, I'll, maybe you see a couple deep throws or a couple little uh, pocket passes, and you know, a little shuffle pass here and there. But I don't think you're going to see anything deep tonight. I'd be, I'd be very shocked, but it'd be impressive to see. Well, it's the Catholic Memorial Knights and the Brockton boxers coming up on Brockton Community Access. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this evening's matchup between your Brockton Boxers and the visiting Captain Memorial Knights. Brockton High School would like to take this out. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, football fans of all ages. This is Armin Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium on the campus of Brockton High School where tonight the vaunted Catholic Conference comes to town in the Catholic Memorial Knights to face your one and one Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, the Wishbone himself, Alex Wish. Alex, Brockton had a very strong game against Wayman, 27 to 10 the final score in that one. Three touchdown passes, a very good effort from their starting quarterback, Jose Montero Jr. And we're gonna listen to the National Anthem. Sounds good.
That's it. Sorry, folks, due to technical difficulties, our national anthem will not play. All right, so we're off for the bang. The national anthem has uh, not been played, but the land of the free, the home of the brave. We've got Friday Night Lights here at Marciano Stadium. As we were saying, 27 to 10, the final score of the boxers. Last matchup. I got confused. I heard the national anthem. The cheerleaders started to sing it. Now I'm all thrown off. This is going to be an interesting night. But 27 to 10, the final score. Brockton taking the win against Weymouth. Three touchdown passes and Rosenpierre busting open a few ginormous 60-yard runs. Brockton, on a wet night like this, you've got a slick field in the turf. We've got wet pigskin. What do the boxers have to do to, to keep the turnovers to a bare minimum against somebody in Catholic Memorial that can take advantage of those turnovers? Well, as I was saying before the pregame show, um, you got to stick to the ground tonight. The ground is key. Um, short passes, short passing Both game. Got it running. And now the national anthem. And now we're going to hear the national anthem. Oh, boy. any indication of how tonight's going to go it's going to be a very interesting night for BCA Sports Brockton has won the toss selected to defer and will defend the end zone to our left so Catholic Memorial to receive the opening kickoff as the teams get ready to go here, as we turn to the Mad Dog Research Team for the official weather report, it is a balmy 58 degrees, as you can probably see. A driving mist from left to right across your screen. That is expected to continue throughout this game with gusts of winds that can get up to 20 miles an hour. So the boxers will have to do their best to not leave things to the wind and mother nature. Yeah, it will surely affect this game the way the weather is right now. That's why I said it's probably gonna be running games. If you're passing, it's probably gonna be short. Shuffle passes, you know, screen passes. Anything that is catchable. If you toss that ball, that pigskin tonight, it's gonna fly, depending on which way you are going down the field. The other interesting aspect of this, you've got a very, very slick turf surface down there. The boxers have two stud running backs in uh, Jalen Cundiff and Rosen Pierre. Not everybody is good at digging into the turf, especially when they're only high schoolers. And this is really the first wet game the boxers have played here at Marciano Stadium on such a slick surface. Yeah, just looking up here, I mean, the turf does look very slick with the light reflecting off of it. It looks slick. So in the run game, you gotta be very careful to easily injure yourself tonight. Well, the boxers to kick off. They have three receivers back deep for the Catholic Memorial Knights. Catholic Memorial wearing their white jerseys, silver pants, red and white stripe down the side and the silver helmets with a red CM on the side. Brockton on the other hand, as we see a squib kick right off the bat. Brockton 
testing the field surface. Oh, oh that's a hit yes. right there at the 21-yard line. Excellent coverage downfield for the Brockton Boxers kickoff team. There's a great start to your special teams right there. Motivate the team. Let's go. First play. Right to it. Right to the grindstone. Josh Boards with the old school Roman Reigns spear to the Catholic Memorial receiver. Anyway, Brockton wearing their home black jerseys, maroon pants, black and white striped down the side, and the maroon helmets with the boxer decal on the side. Trips to the far side and looking to pass right off the bat is CM. Now it's going to be a quarterback keeper turning to the outside and cutting up field, and he has a gain of about eight, and he's still on his feet and still in bounds. A gain of about 13 yards and a first down for the CM Knights. Now five missed tackles there for the Brockton defense. Could have easily get him at the line of scrimmage, but he ended up gaining about 12, 13 more. And it's interesting to note after seeing that play, the pigskin's not the only thing you have to worry about being slick. Those jerseys, the arms you're trying to grab, the helmets, everything's slippery down there. Everything's wet right now. Helmets. Loves. This is a Jersey's. running play and stopped at the line of scrimmage was the CM running back. A gain of about two with the generous spot. Second down and eight. Nick Goffredo, the senior quarterback for the CM Knights, stands at six feet, weighing in at 160. It's a little bit, a little bit undersized for a quarterback. Four receivers split to each side. Delfrito in the shotgun. As the wind and the rain's picking up here at Marciano. Delfrito back to pass. It's a quick screen. It's going to fall incomplete. Intended for number two, Keon Tucker. You see that uh, that play right there. The wind definitely affected that pass. It fell a little short. The wind was blowing it back. And Brockton electing to go with the wind in the first half. So CM is fighting Mother Nature. It's a minute and a half, we've bled off the clock so far in the first quarter. Trips to the far side, Goffredo on a shotgun. Lone receiver to the near sideline. Goffredo clearly handling the snap, back to pass. He's pressured, throwing, and this one is going to fall incomplete, I believe. And that is going to bring up about a fourth and eight for the CM Knights. You talk about a good defensive stand for the boxers coming out strong and stopping a potent CM offense. Yeah, right to the grindstone, uh, right from that first play, right off the kickoff, you know, getting them, pushing them right back into the, you know, their 20 yard line. It was impressive and it, you know, fueled their defense. It is Jalen Ellerby Cundiff back to receive the punt. A kick that you can see the wind affecting it. Takes a Brockton bounce and it will be touched down at the 31 yard line. And that's where we're going to have the first look of the night at senior quarterback Jose Montero Jr. Three touchdown passes last week, three the week before in Lexington. A potent passing offense, and we're going to see again whether Peter Colombo, who is like, he likes to leave the decision up to the quarterback, is going to rely on a run-heavy offense tonight in the wind, in the rains, or kind of test things out through the air. I'm interested to see this first drive. This first drive will definitely tell you how the rest of this game is going to go for the Brockton Boxers. Montero Jr. is in the shotgun. We're going to have... Timeout called on the field. They're going to wipe down the football. Two receivers split to each side. Three running backs flanking Jose Montero Jr., who stands in the shotgun. As we give to Rosen Pierre, who charges ahead as a gain of maybe about three falling forward. And that's going to be a second and seven for the Boxers. Second down and seven. That would be Cundiff coming off the field. Hey, 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 
Boxers last week against Weymouth only huddled up maybe about 15 snaps throughout the game using the two minute drill. And now Montero Jr. gives to Pierre who is taken down in the backfield. And that'll bring about a third and we'll call it 11. And a three yard, four yard loss on the play for Rosen Pierre. Yeah, that defensive line for CM right now is They are not letting a single Brockton boxer get over that line of scrimmage right now. Well, we'll see what the Brockton boxers do here on third down. Eight minutes left in the first quarter, third and officially 10 for the Boxers. Split receivers, one to each side. Montero Jr. flanked by Rosen Pierre to his left. Receiving the snap back to pass is Montero looking towards the near sideline and that slick football intended for number 13, Tejon Darty Glenn, right through his hands. It's gonna be like that all night, very slick. Fourth and 10 for the Boxers, who are going to punt this one away. With the wind, this could be a very long punt because the wind is picking up quite a bit here. A low kick, a spiraling kick is going to be over his head and it's going to bounce all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And we have, we got a fortune teller here in the booth. Before that kick, he said it's going to the, it's going to the end zone. And it did. Number 39 was back to receive that kick. That is Will Fay. And that would be a lucky bounce if it stopped right on the one yard line. That would have been awesome for the Brockton Boxers defense. But that will start right at the 20. Two receivers to the far sideline. Gofredo hands the ball off and stopped immediately and pushed ahead maybe a gain of two yards on the play for the CM running back. Pick up a four on the play, that'll bring up second down and six. Second and six. Garrett McCarthy, number nine on the carry. Well, oh, Barkley defense looked like they had it wrapped up, but he got a few extra yards, broke away a bit. It'll be a third and about five to go now for the Catholic Memorial Knights with 6.35 left to go in the first quarter. Four receivers split to side. Gofrido flanked by the senior running back. It's going to be a screen pass. It's going to be high but caught by number seven, who's wrapped up in the backfield but still on his feet and charging through boxers and gets ahead maybe from turning something into nothing, a gain of about two. That was Hunter Tully, the junior co-captain. Down. And it'll be fourth and about three yards to go for the Knights. It is Jalen Ellerby Cundiff back to receive Jaylen at the 43 yard line. Low kick that bounces at the 48, and it will be touched down at the 41-yard line. Good starting field position for the Brockton Boxers offense. Yeah, very good kick. I mean, going against the wind, it's not going to go that far. So it's a good kick for the Brockton Boxers to start at your 41. after that first feeling out drive, whether the boxers continue with the ground and pound or try to test some things out in the year. The rain has let up a little bit. 
only tested uh, one pass, but I mean, it slipped out of the hands. We'll Trips. see what they do. Trips to the near side, Jose Montero Jr. back to pass. He throws over the middle and is almost intercepted by number nine of the Knights. That is Garrett McCarthy. That would have been pick six right there. Nothing but green in front of Mr. McCarthy. And this it's gonna be a continuing topic throughout the night. That slick football is going to ruin lives tonight. Definitely uh, change your stats a little bit for a quarterback if you're throwing the ball tonight. You might see some picks, change your stats up. Four receiver split to each side. Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Man in motion. It's going to be a quarterback keeper. Montero Jr. still on his feet and has a gain of about five yards. Junior Montero on the five yard run. That'll bring up third down. in the backfield tonight has been Rosen Pierre last week 18 carries 188 yards with a long run of 72 yards and he's looking to bust off similar numbers against CM tonight yeah, that's pretty impressive numbers that's against Weymouth uh, you got CM tonight they are different a bunch of people scrambling night defense finally gets lined up to give to Pierre, who's trying to turn the corner, he does, and is close to the first down marker. And will be Rosie in the one, and we're waiting for the spot. Looks like they just it's going to be fourth and on the first down, maybe half a yard. So officially, and one. fourth and one. Boxers have no choice but to go for it here. Yeah, you're at midfield, you know. Kind of windy, rainy night. We gotta lose. Look for the quarterback keeper right up the gut from Jose Montero Jr. As the ball spotted on the far hash mark. CM knows what's coming, stacking the box. Montero Jr. in the shotgun, trying to jump the snap is one of the linebackers. Ultimately having to stop. Brockton trying to draw the Knights offside. It's not successful. And Brockton's going to call a timeout. Most likely uh, regroup. In the NFL, we would see uh, a punt. But maybe not time. Three minutes, 33 seconds to go in the first quarter. Fourth and short one yard for the boxers who look like they're going to go for it here as the driving wind has picked up even more so we've got a few rogue umbrellas in the crowd dedicated student section in front of us their first time out of the first half Still scoreless, something we didn't say too much last year in this matchup at Catholic Memorial in West Roxbury. CM, of course, dominated that game with 34 to eight, the final score number. Rockton's gonna go for it, and we're gonna have flags. It's gonna be a false start against the Boxers, and I believe that is going to be enough for the Boxers to punt on fourth and six. Last year when you saw Brockton Boxers um, get defeated by CM, you know, obviously a different game, but I think the weather is really going to help the Boxers have a chance in this game tonight. Brockton lined up to punt. Two receivers back for the Knights. A high spiraling kick falling at the 10, and this one is going to go through the end zone. It's going to be like that all half. Yet another touchback. But there are flags thrown. 
roughing the kicker against CN, so Brockton gets a free 15 and an automatic first down. On the nice. That's a huge call. That'll give Brockton an automatic first down. Now that is a huge call that gives you your offense another chance to score in this game and take a lead. Get your defense something worth going on the field for. So it'll be first and 10 for the boxers. On the CM side of the field, the ball spotted at the 39 yard line. Split receivers, one to each side. Jose Montero Jr. flanked by Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. And in motion is Cundiff, rather, and he turns the corner. Has a gain of about eight yards to put it on the spot. Very close to a first down for Jalen Ellerby Cundiff, one of the co captains of this boxer team. From Ellerby Cundiff for a boxer. First down. It is going to be a really generous spot. First down, boxers. Split receivers, one to each side. Darty Glenn to the near side. Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Now Darty Glenn, the man in motion. to give to Rosen Pierre, who has a hole. And he lowers the shoulder and gets to the 19-yard line. Now that was Dexter Cumberlander, number 30 on the carry for the boxers. Second down and two. Second and two is the Boxers offense seemingly starting to click. Terra Jr. in the shotgun. To give to Cumberlander right up the middle. He's got a first down. And the Boxers are starting to roll. Pick up a three on the play. That'll bring up another Boxer. First down. 15 left to go in the first quarter. Still scoreless. Rockton threatening. First down in the red zone. Ball is at the 17 yard line of Catholic Memorial. Then we got a timeout. The timeout called by Catholic Memorial. Let me remind you that the MIAA rules. There is no two minute point. In the first quarter, no score. In the first quarter. <laughs> Especially in the first quarter. <laughs> no two minute warning in the game or in the first quarter. I'm thinking it's almost halftime. School spirit, great God, ladies. Time out by Catholic Memorial 202 to go in the first quarter. Brockton threatening, first and 10 from the 17 yard line. The rain slowing to just a slight mist. Wind is still strong. Though. Split receivers, Montero Jr. again in the shotgun. To give to Pierre, who goes right up the gut and gets to the 13 yard line. It's going to be second and seven for the boxers. Clock ticks down to one minute and 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Two receivers to the far side, clean on the near side. Montero Jr. in the shotgun yet again. Oh, Ball's oh. out, fumble, and CM has it. Fumble on the play, recovered by the Knights. They'll take over from That's a big blow to their boxers offense. Line, you had your ball. And in the red zone, and he can't even put points on the board. That hurts. 
was supposed to be a play action quarterback keeper. Ended up popping up before Montero Jr. even got hit. And popping out, and there were a couple of CM linemen there. Once again, pick up the loose garbage. Slip pigskin. Tim quarterback, Lafredo, flanked by two running backs. He's going to give it and push the head for a gain of about seven. Was number eight. Terry Johnson. Forty-five seconds left in the first quarter. Trips to the near side. The give to number nine, uh, Garrett McCarthy, the senior captain. That's going to be good for a CM first down. As we approach thirty seconds left in the first quarter, first and ten for the Knights. Receiver set, two to the near side. Gofrito in the shotgun. We'll give again. And still on his feet. Brockton having trouble in wrapping up. And turning again, something into nothing for a five yard gain. You know, the Brockton defense has been doing great all night. The one thing that has been killing them is not wrapping them up right at the line of scrimmage. At the end of the first quarter, and we have no score. The scoreboard shows triple zero, so the end of the first quarter, the score, a whopping zero to zero between the CM Knights and your Brockton Boxers. Alex, what did you see in the first quarter that's encouraging for the Boxers and a little bit that needs to be improved on in the second? Well, what's very encouraging is their defense right now. Um, the defense can definitely make uh, the right adjustments into the uh, second quarter. Definitely wrapping up a guy is key. You know, make them lose yardage and keep them in their own end of the field. Not bringing them to Boxer territory. They haven't even been in Boxer's territory. And that's what I like. You know, they make their adjustments and they stop them right before they enter Boxer territory. That's what I like. The offense, on the other hand, you know, the running game, as I said, is going to be key here. And, you know, they almost did score. They almost did score down on their, on uh, CM territory. But, you know, you know, slip pigskin, as I've been saying. We've been saying this before the game and during this quarter, you know, it's been tough. It's going to be a very tough game that way. And the weather doesn't seem to help anyone right now. All the wind and the rain's picking up and CM now going with Mother Nature from left to right across your screen. It'll be interesting to see if CM tries to air it out to test if the receivers can get to the, where the ball would fall with the winds fast enough. Two receivers set, one split to each side. 11 minutes on the clock in the second quarter, still scoreless between the Knights and your boxers. Fredo in the shotgun, flanked by two running backs now. Adjusting a little bit. And Brockton finally able to bust into the backfield and make a tackle. And be a five yard and a half loss. It's going to be third. Five to go for Nice. Now CM splitting it out, trips to the near side, low snap, pitched out to McCarthy who has a hole, and McCarthy to 40, some of his feet to the 50, and McCarthy all the way to the boxer's 45 yard line. I believe that was number two, Keon Tucker. That was a pretty good run. And now 
now. Whistle is for the through. chain gang to move. First and 10 for the Knights at the 46 yard line of the Brockton Boxers. Trips to the far side. I spoke too soon. Another pitch out, this one to Tucker, who turns the corner again, and he's got another night first down and more. A gain of about 16. Uh, Tucker is Tucker. quick. He's quick. That play looks like it's uh, working for the Catholic Memorial Knights. Two plays in a row, and boxers have not picked up on it. He's trying to trip to the near side. Scofrio in the shotgun. <laughs> Point to his right by Keon Tucker. This one's going to be a quarterback keeper and absolutely decked as the starting quarterback of the Knights. Tackle me by number three, Josh Boards. Josh Boards on the Excellent defensive coverage for the Boxers. Second and ten. Second 10 for the CM Knights. Three receivers, two to the near side, two running backs flanking Frostrito to give. These two, I believe, McCarthy, who turned to the head for a game of about five. Third down, five. And third down for the Rocket Boxers defense. It's third and five. Spread defense and the give to Tucker who charges ahead. He's close to a first down now. He has it and a few extra still on his feet all the way down to the Boxer 11 yard line. I believe was Keon Tucker once again. Yes. Going to be a first and goal first spotted goal, yeah. at the 10 yard line. First and goal for the Knights. The first such set of downs on the night. Two receivers to the near side. Goffredo handing off to Tucker, who charges ahead and has a gain of about five. Run by McCarthy, second goal. Garrett McCarthy on the carry. So it is second and goal from the seven yard line, officially game three. Trips to the near side for the free He's going to give it to Keon Tucker. Tucker trying to turn the court. Finds a little bit of a hole falling towards the end zone. He's going to be short. Yeah, He's going to be spotted on the one yard line. And so a third and goal from Take the one. And goal. from the one yard line. It's gonna be a quarterback keeper with some uh, extra strength in the backfield. Charging ahead and he's going to fall into the end zone and that's a Catholic Memorial touchdown. Nick Goffredo, the, keeper now. Nick the quarterback for the Knights. Keeping it himself in the 648 left in the second quarter. CM leading the boxer six to nothing. Of 
get a touchdown for the Knights and lining up to kick an extra point. Again, with the win are the CM Knights. Nick Goffredo with the help of Keon Tucker and McCarthy punching into the end zone. Extra point is good, that'll put CM up by good. So with 6.48 left to go in the second quarter, seven to nothing with the Knights on top. Brockton has to counter on this next drive. Yes, they do, they have to answer. You know, I, I brought up how defense is great in the first quarter, you know, stopping them every drive, but not that drive. So they gotta make their adjustments. They're gonna answer here and, you know, defense has to do their job. So Brockton sending four receivers back in a return formation that in all my years of watching football, both professional and high school, I have never seen love go anywhere. A 5-2-4 setup like the boxers have right now. If Catherine Memorial's thinking of uh, doing a squib kick here or or the wind itself is a factor, so the ball can go anywhere. So maybe that's why they, they just want to get the ball. It is a kick to the right. Cleanly handled by the boxers, return team. And now headed up field, and running into his own men, but still on his feet, and getting to the 28 yard line. Jahar Maui on the interception. For the Boxers, and it's a first and 10 from the 29 yard line for Vizay Monterra Jr. in the Boxers offense. Who for the first time this game are going against the wind. The Peter Colombo offense, let's say the boxers try to march downfield and not leave too much time on the clock for the CM Knights to counter. The boxers will receive the second half kickoff. Ontario Jr. in the shotgun, he gives off to Pierre, a flag is thrown. Live on the play. It's going to be a false start against the Boxers. Back them up false five yards. Brock, and that'll bring up first and 15. First down. Yeah, second down. So, Jeff so declines the penalty, so it'll be second and 11. Now we're gonna have a timeout called by Brockton. 6.20 left to go. Decent sized crowd considering the weather. CM usually travels well. A very dedicated student section from Brockton High in front of us. The uh, student section could be a little bigger tonight with the marching band. I would have loved to see them tonight, you know, being an alumnus, being in the marching band, but I could only imagine those two just filling up with rain. You know, just hearing the marching band would bring back a lot of memories of Friday night lights here. Trips to the far side, Montero Jr. back to pass, and he's going to get absolutely clobbered in the backfield by a few Catholic Memorial Knights. He's lucky the ball didn't come out. He's ready to throw that ball. He's in a throwing formation. He got decked. Could have been easily a fumble. That sack, courtesy of number 72 of the Knights, Lucas Foley.
So it's a third and a country mile. It's about 22 yards to go for the boxers. Trips to the far side. Brockton, no choice but to throw it here against the wind. Jose Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Now Rose and Pierre switching sides. Flanking Montero Jr. to his left end. We're gonna have a false start against the boxers to make it third and 27. Ryan on the play, another false start by the boxers. Third down and long. Third and forget about it. Trips to the far side, one receiver to the near side. Montero Jr. pressured again, and he's going to spin off a few hits and then get wrapped up at the 10-yard line. Another sack for the Catholic Memorial Knights. And a loss of about five to make it fourth five and the play, and to make it 30. So the boxers will be hunting into the wind from Oh God, that puncher's gonna have to be in his own end zone. CM might send the house here to try to create a safety. CM has uh, two receivers back for 40. Looking for a short kick. And it Low is. Low snap and the kick is taken at the 45 and charging up the head, still on his feet. He's got one man to beat. Still on his feet to the 16 yard line. Is the Knights return man? Captain Memorial will yeah, start uh, off on the box of 16 yard line, first down. They'll be finding themselves in the red zone again. Can't get much better starting field position than that. It's a first and 10 from the 16 yard line for the Catholic Memorial Knights. I tell you, whoever's going with the win has the advantage in the game. Definitely, and right now, Kevin Morris is taking advantage of their opportunity. Trips to the far side, as CM might look to air it out here. A little shovel pass, complete to Keon Tucker. He's got a first down and more diving towards the end zone, and he's gonna get in. This one's gonna come back. And it's going to be brought back, I believe it's gonna be holding against the Knights. Official call. <laughs> it is holding against the CM Knights. The call is holding now. Bring up. 4:15 left to go in the first half. Second Seven nothing. The CM Knights over the Brockton Boxers. And threatening again to first. Rocket will accept the penalty. 15. After the boxers accept the penalty. First down. Ball now spotted at the 24 yard line. Frito right up the middle. Giving it to McCarthy, and he's going to be stopped. Right at the line of scrimmage, we might have had a gain of one on forward progress. Well, that's Brock the Boxer's defense I like to see. Just stuff him. 3.53 in counting left in the first quarter. First half. Spread offense for the Knights this time. Three receivers to the near side. Alfredo in the shotgun. Back to pass is Alfredo looking long and he's going to get wrapped up and the ball is out. And it's going to be recovered by CM. They're going to rule it an incomplete pass. We're going to have a conference of officials. And there's a flag on the board. Flag on the play. Hey, he was already getting wrapped up. And he threw that away. He should have got sacked. Should call that a 
sad. It was already wrapped up. I think that's 12 men on the field? Postman just delivered. It was 12 men on 12 the field. 12 men on the field. Forget about the postman. I called out before I looked at it. Oh, the postman delivered. That was delivered. It's, it's third in a lot for the CM Knights. Trips to the near side. Galfredo on the shotgun. Flanked by Tucker. 3.22 left in the second quarter. Galfredo receiving the, uh, the snap. Back to pass. Looking long. Looking deep. He's got a man. Incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. Boxers defense comes up with a huge stop. Yeah, pretty much uh, pushing them back at least, you know, good 18 yards that where brings, they originally started. Yeah, bring up, that brings okay. about a fourth, and if I had to measure it, call it, I don't know, 26, 27, 30. Who knows, but the CM Knights back to punt. I think you're gonna go for a field goal here. If you're going with the wind, you get an excellent opportunity to add some points to the board. Another high snap. Forget about it. And a very high kick, not much distance, and pinning them, pinning them deep. It'll Within be the, five yard the four line. yard line. Yeah. The ball will be down at the three yard line. Three minutes three left yard play line. Till half time. So the boxers, Staring at a 97 yard field in front of him. Three, oh, six to go in the second quarter. Oh, the boxers, I'm taking a few shots. You can't hurt. You know, I, would, I would actually, I would actually try the outside here. You know, try the running game on the outside. The running game has mostly been right down trying to go right down the throat with it, but it hasn't been really working out for them. They should try the outside. The CM has tried the outside. They've been successful with it. You got a mismatch on the near side as Brockton trying to create some space, runs it right up the middle. Gain of maybe about a yard and a half. You know what, try maybe a pitch outside. Pitch to the outside, run up field. You got a mismatch in man coverage. The CM takes a timeout. It's Jalen Ellerby Cundiff going against number seven of the Knights. And then, of course, is Hunter Tully, the 5'11", 185 defensive back. Ellerby Cundiff comes across the slot. He's wide open. Yeah. I'm saying. Someone get me the telestrator. Tully standing at the 10 yard marker on the near side. That would be Cundiff coming over to him now. There's nobody else even in the area. You got a huge mismatch right there for Brock and Box's offense. The box snap, the ball is out, and it's going to be a safety. And CM adding a couple of points. Watch snap, Jose Montero Jr. Couldn't gain himself before CM passed on the most garbage. And that brings the score to 9-0 with 2.53 to go in the second quarter. Definitely, uh, definitely the win and everything is not helping the Conchers. CM is definitely taking advantage in that category. Brockton had, uh, had their opportunities, but right now they're, they're coming up short. They're coming up with uh, not too much. And so 
with the safety comes a free kick from the 20 yard line. When I say free kick, it's going to be resembling a punt. <laughs> the boxers aren't really sure how to execute a free punt. CM dangerous. It's a low kick. Falling at the 46, taken and falling on. All things considered, 44 yard line, CM not a bad. Start for the Boxers defense, who could have really been up the creek. Going against the wind and the nastiness. <laughs> Time out on the field. We remind you next week. Friday night. We're gonna go get Wicked Smart. Wicked Smart at Harvard. As the boxers take on BC High at Harvard University. And you know what? I'm gonna park my car in Harvard Yard. The screen pass can complete the Tully, who spinning back to the near side and knocked out of bounds to 47. But you can't park your car. Pick up, uh, three on the three on the play, bring up second the number one get out of jail free kick. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? I think you're going to feel smarter just being at home. Oh, yeah. Tully in the backfield, turning the corner. He's got a first down and more still on his feet to the 40 yard line and we're seeing the Brockton inability to wrap up tackles. Time out called by Catholic Memorial. You see Catholic Memorial to the advantage of, um, you know, a little throw there to his running back. Just goes off to the wide end, you know. Trips to the near side for the Knights. Dofrito gives to Tully, who is hit and wrapped up in the backfield and ripped down for a five yard loss. Tackle behind the line by Sonny Oboa. Round three, next second down. Senior dual athlete, starter for the Rock and Boxers basketball team as well. Making the tackle on that one. As we approach two minutes remaining in the first half. Again, there is no two minute warning. Trips to the near side. See him wasting time off the clock. Brockton's going to call a timeout. Timeout, Brockton. 153 to go. Fourth. Nine to nothing, CM up Brockton. As the nastiness picks up even more. One fifty-three left to go. It did not surprise me. The officials. Delay the start of the second half. Oh, is picking up. Nastiness or plenty out there. Yeah. 
Pass complete to Tully, who looks like he's gonna first down. Run me my six dollars. Visibility really starting to suffer here. It's knocked up in the air and it's going to fall incomplete with 138 in the second quarter and a fourth down for the CM Knights. Four broken boxes there just ready to catch it. There's a 30% chance of precipitation right now. Trips to the near side. Duffrigo on the shotgun. He's going to pitch it up to Tully. He's trying to turn the corner and he's got the first down. Of course, still on his feet all the way to the 20 yard line. It's a first down for the Knights. A minute and 31 to go. It's a good blocking there. I see it. Could have wrapped him up. Could have stopped him from getting the first down, but defense uh, came up big there. Two minute drill. Gonna drill for the Knights. Trips to the far side now. If we go to get pitches up to this time is Keon Tucker who barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Right on that last play, the player was a clean receipt, but the frustration of you know, trying to wrap up the running back there. on the clock now as CM looks to add to the What is day? <laughs> Gotta give a shout out to our poor intern, Jacob Hazel, who is looked like he just came back up from a deep sea scuba dive. He's roaming the sidelines. And I think he came back from sea. Fishing. Fishing. 112 left to go in the second quarter. See him up 9-0 looking to add to that total. They send three receivers to the near side. Frito again in the shotgun flanked by Keon Tucker. Low snap handled by Goffredo. He throws it over the middle and it's going to fall incomplete. The boxer defender was in, in the area. 107 left to go. Clock stops with the incomplete pass. Three receivers 
Just two boxers sideline. Gofredo back to pass, rolling up to the near side, throwing, and again falling incomplete with 102 on the field. Incomplete pass is going to be a fourth down. So it's going to be a fourth and 11 for the Knights. They look like they're going to go for a field goal. Ten yards set from the end zone. Back at the 30-yard line is the base holder. So it'll be about a 40-yard kick. And the kick is up. And it's going to be wide to the right. It had the distance, but not the accuracy. And so Brockton takes over on a turnover on downs, and that's a big defensive stop for Brockton Boxer. Definitely is. You know, after all that frustration, you know, they finally came up with some good results. You know, CM doesn't score again to make this game 12 to nothing. So, gives the boxers a little bit of relief. You know, maybe bring that offense out and get some motivation going to try and go downfield and maybe get a score before that. Yeah, from the boxers, I'm taking a few knees here, getting to the locker room dry off although four receivers set four split to each side Montero Jr. in the shotgun ready to pass and it's a screen pass complete to Darty Glenn or rather falling incomplete as Darty Glenn heard and felt some footsteps coming in his direction they gotta let that ball come to the chest you know Catching it with his hands first. You gotta bring that ball right into the chest. You gotta let it hit the chest and then catch it. Especially in a rainy game like this, you gotta let the ball come to the chest first. Two inches to try to catch it. Second and ten for the boxers. Four receivers to the side. And CM is going to burn another timeout. Jr. on the quarterback keeper, finds a hole and he's got some room to run, he gets to the far sideline, he's got a first down and more still on his feet to the 45 and it's Jose Montero Jr. pushed out of bounds at the 46 yard line. That's a good read by Montero. Great read. Way to get them upfield a little bit. You know, give them a little bit of a two minute drill here. Actually 44 second drill. Four receivers set, Montero Jr. again to the shotgun. He's gonna do the same thing, and this time he's gonna be wrapped up at the line of scrimmage, no gain on the play. This is now 37 seconds left. So here we, the Brockton Boxer halftime. One can dream. Slip and sliding on the field. <laughs> 37 seconds left, 9 nothing. CM on top of Brockton. Brockton with one last stand in the first half. Gift appears, he's got a hole. And still on his feet, lowering the shoulder and getting to the CM 40 yard line with 31 seconds left. And hurry up, well, offense here. Hurry up. Yeah, for a boxer first down. Let's go, Ralph! 
that again, baby. 30 seconds to go, first and 10 for the boxers, four receivers set, now on the CM side of the field. Balls, balls out and another fumble. The Bronte oh, boxes uh, covered that one. Number four, Jose Montero Jr. picking up two. A loose ball that was dropped by, by Brockton. Cundiff, and Brockton's going to call a timeout. Now it's 15 seconds to go. What do you think the Brockton boxes do here with 15 seconds? You take a few shots, the wind seemingly calmed down just a little bit. The rain almost is completely stopped for the time being. Knock on wood. You got time realistically if you're quick. Three shots downfield to the end zone. A couple of tight ends for extra protection on the line. Try to hit Ellery Cundiff for Darty Glenn downfield. This is actually the perfect snap call right now because this is the best I've seen it all night. Slight missed picking up. Trips to the near side. Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Second and 11 to go for the boxers, and we're going to have a flag, and it's going to be a false start against the boxers. Yeah, that false start is killer. Jose Montero, you can see his frustration. You know, pushing them back another five yards. You know, stopping the motivation of this drive to try and get something before the half. So it will be second and 16 to go for the Boxers. Trips to the far side. Montero Jr. receiving the snap in the shotgun. Back to pass. He's pressured, running up ahead. Flags thrown, but Montero Jr. still on his feet and now tackled from behind. Back at the original line of scrimmage. He might have had a gain. And CM calling for a recovered fumble. I didn't see the ball come out. Uh, the um, the uh, refs are not seeing that. Not from what I see. I think he was down. Gonna have a conference of officials. CM still pleading its case for a fumble recovery. The refs are discussing here. I think it's gonna be down. Down on contact. Now there is flags prior to what CM thinks is a fumble. Seven seconds left in the first half. Looks like it's gonna be on the boxes. <laughs> Holding against the boxers is the call, so instead of a fumble recovery, it's going to be a second. Ball the play is holding against Rockin. About 20 yards. And that penalty right there. It's probably going to kill it for the boxers this half. Seven seconds left. Getting pushed back 10 yards. I don't think, uh, unless something miraculous or you have a great run here, this is the last, probably the last play of the half. Montero Jr. is just going to take a knee and mercifully end the first half. We have a so at the end of the first half, the score nine is nine to nothing. The CM Knights leading the Brockton Boxers. It's been a nasty one. It's been absolutely gory out there. Slippery, nasty, windy, rainy. Nobody can grab on or hold on to anything. Your thoughts on the first half? My thoughts on the first half. Uh, defense. Defense has been coming up big. Um, you know, I mean, while nine points on the board in a game like this, that's okay. But, you know, your defense is, right now is your big part of your game. The offense has been really, you know, coming up, trying to help out the defense at all. You know, the defense has been trying to keep this game alive. But offense has not been there tonight. They have, you know, flags are killing them, you know, bad snaps. Fumbles, 
it doesn't look good for the Brockton Boxers uh, offense at this point. 9-0 at the end of the first half. Brockton receiving the second half kickoff. They're going to go with the wind in Mother Nature. What do they have to do on the first drive to set the tone for the second half? I'm, I'm telling you, they got to be creative. They, you know, they've been running. They've been running right down the gut. But you got to go to the outsides. you got to try the outsides. I mean, CM has been doing it. But Brockton has been trying that gut. They've been saying, okay, Jose Montero Jr., uh, we, we think he can get him up the middle. We think we, we can get other guys up the middle. But, you know, CM has them down. you got to try those outsides. you got to try some creative plays here in the second half. Get creative and try to get this game with the contention. Well, the score at the end of the first half, the Catholic Memorial Knights leading the Brompton Boxers by a score of 9 to nothing. That's a touchdown and a safety. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome back in to Armand Colombo Field here at Rocky Marciano Stadium for second half action between the Catholic Memorial Knights and the Rockin' Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner for tonight's festivities, the Wishbone himself. Alex Wish. Aww. It's been a wet one. It's been a windy one. It's been a nasty one. There's been a few fumbles. A few and the box is going to start from their own 30 But other than that, it's a perfect night for football. Once again, we want to thank the fans for coming out tonight. Once again, thanks for our cheerleaders. Great job, ladies. The score is nine to nothing coming into this second half. Catholic Memorial on top. A touchdown and a safety in the field. The Reeds have almost come to a stop. Brockton receiving the kickoff of the second half. Pick up on uh, two yards by Pierre. That'll bring up second down here. Pierre on the carry, gain of a couple, second and eight. Then Sienna wearing their way, white jersey, silver pants. Went with strike down the side. As the box snapped, the ball is out, and Montero Jr. is going to have to fall on it. This is akin to the old family barbecue activity of throwing olive oil on a pig and trying to catch him. That's the football right now. Pretty much. And then, um, long play. Brockton has done that all night. Montero Jr. in the shotgun, he's being pressured, he's going to have to roll out, now throwing deep over the middle, oh, and it's a good count, a flag thrown, and still on his feet to the 30, to the 25, still on his feet, falling to the 20 yard line, an excellent play by number 9 for the Boxers, and that, of course, That's made by number nine. is Paul Mitchell. Mitchell. 
who's not been the leading receiver for the boxers, but his catches have been huge all season. That was definitely a That's great a momentum. Boxer first catch. down. Big, huge first down right there. Huge. Montero Jr. giving off to Rosa Pierce. Here, here, aficionado. Second and eleven for the boss. to pass, he's going to have to throw quick and there's going to be pass interference on the defense as making that hit just a little bit early was the Catholic Memorial defense. I love high school games. The chant is you can't do that from the Brockton Boxer fan section. Pass appearance against the Knights that have been on that. Incorrect. First down. You can do that. It's the penalized 15 yards for it. It's like committing a crime. You can still commit the crime. You're just going to spend some time on your Trips to the near side, Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Give to Rosen Pierre, cutting up the field as a gain of about four yards. With 8.20 left, as the wind started to pick up. The nice sea breeze coming off the Brockton Fairgrounds. Trips to the near side. Clean on the CM side. Montero Jr. gives to Pierre, charging up ahead, still on his feet. And Keeps legs churning, and it's going to be good for a boxer first down. Third down and two. Just shy. It's going to be third and about half an inch. Quarterback keeper up the middle. Is it to get her into the end zone for a Brockton boxer touchdown? He needed an inch for the first down and he got and put six on the board for seven boxers. yards for a boxer touchdown and that brings the so boxers within one possession the of the CM Knights. 7 28. Where's it in? Let's go! Max Tobo to kick the extra point. Snap, the kick is up, and the kick is good. We have a 9 well, 7 ball game. We have a game. Brockton finally, finally able to bust That's through the on their opening possession of the second half, going against the win, which is a more impressive thing. The big play a 45 yard pass to Paul Mitchell. And capped off by a 7 1⁄2 rushing touchdown for Jose Montero Jr. Three and a half minutes into the second half. This one off. Comes a little bouncing kick, bouncing at the 20. Bobbled by number five and turns up field and gets to the 25 before being wrapped up. And we have another look at Nick Guafredo in the CM Knights offense. With the reins 
picking up here yet again. Well, they finished that drive uh, perfect time before the wind picked up. And they just started pushing it. Yeah, that drive was pretty clear. It's been coming in pockets. It's been annoying. There's a flag on the play. It's going to be 12 men on the field for the boxers. Lang against Brock in five yards to bring up first and five. Tanner behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of four on the play. That'll bring up second and nine. Back even by Nick Goffredo. That's 
definitely not going to be a lot of misreading that. 14. You know, CM did a good job faking them out. And uh, sticking with the QB run. There's again a four receiver set for the Knights and the give to Keon Tucker getting to above the 11 and a half before he is brought down. Four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, nine to seven. We have another injured Brockton boxer down on the field. We have an injury on the play. Jared Connor really earning her paycheck tonight. A couple of big injuries for the Brockton boxers. Dexter Cumberlander still on the sideline. Jose Montero Jr. running onto the field. The starting quarterback playing water board for this break in the action. It's Cumberlander. Well, last game of the season, you can't hold anything back, dude. It's not the last game of the season, but can't hold anything back. Just take it. Cumberland is back on the field for the boxers. Which is a good sign for their senior co-captain. Looks like he's gonna get up. That's a good sign. They're doing some boxer love right now. The injured boxer is number 21. Stanley Gianti. He makes his way to the sideline. So Cumberlander back on. Trips to the far side. Gofredo in the shotgun. Quarterback keeper. And with a huge hole. Flags thrown from every direction. And a touchdown. But I believe this one's going to come back. I think it's going to be holding against the Knights. Laundry flying from every direction on that play. It is oh, going to be holding it against the Sam Knights. No touchdown. The touchdown called back. And instead of six on the board, it will be a second and about 16. We play the down, we got to be second down and 17. It will be a second down officially and 17 to go for the Knights. Same formation, three receivers to the far side, go straight on the shotgun, flanked by McCarthy. Back to pass, looking long, and he's pressured, and going to escape one time, but there's a few more boxes, and the ball's up! The ball's up! And I believe the boxes are falling on it. And it looks like CM was able to fall on it at the last minute, but that is a huge defensive play for the Rocky Boxers. Big, big down and long. It'll be a third down in about half the field for the CF Knights. Look at where the markers are and where they were started. Big loss. And they're starting this play from about East Junior High School. And they have to drive all the way to behind the RMV. They've got half a Proctor to go. We have a penalty against the Boxers. That makes it a much more manageable situation for the Knights. Instead of third and half a Proctor, it's going to be third and maybe about a mile and a half. Yeah, I'll say a 
see what they do here. Effort on the shot, dump trips to the near side. Back to the pass. He's going to be hit, spin off the hit, and keep it himself. And jumping, he might have been past the line of scrimmage when he threw that, but it's going to fall incomplete. And that's going to bring up a fourth and call it about 30 yards. Incomplete pass, it'll bring up fourth down. I think the wind would take it just, and red punt, just right. And CM's going to chase it down and touch it down at the six yard line. Yeah, see if they did a field goal, it would go far. It would be like a line drive, but it would go just right of the post. That's why you gotta aim it over the No, but the wind though, the wind though is strong tonight. The wind is not in your favor, even with going with the wind. Still probably miss right. The boxers take over. They've got a 94 yard field in front of them. Big advantage right there. CM took advantage of it last quarter. Next quarter, you gotta take advantage. Easily try and take a lead. Get a mismatch on the far side. Glenn Darty. Seven boxers are going to get off. And Jose Montero Jr. on the quarterback keeper. He has a first down. Oh, that was a good little play there. See. See, that, that was getting a little creative just there. Got a little more. That was a fantastic play action. Yeah, they got a little more creative with the play action. You know, faked off to the left, and then it ended up going right. Or reverse direction. Right, they went left. Remember, there's always one Catholic conference game a year where it's raining and windy and nasty. The last one we covered was on Morrissey Boulevard at BC High. And that was two years ago. And that was probably the worst game. So far, as Jr. tries to turn in the corner and gets to the 25 yard line. See, I didn't cover that game, but I remember you telling me about that. It was, and all, I it was yeah. awesome. I remember that night. You it was know, about from, 15 degrees. Yeah, it was, it was awful. I, sea breeze blowing in from the beer. Oh yeah, then that's BC Morrison High. The BC High, they're right on the harbor right there. But instead of the harbor, this year we're going to Harvard. Harvard. You're gonna feel wicked smart. Uh, Harvard is uh, in the, the it's close to the water as well, close to the Chows. The Chows, the Chows River. 
So you still, still get that, a little breeze there. The still a little breeze at Harvard. The high game was not that it was raining and windy and nasty we had a sea breeze. It was that they didn't have space in the press box for us. So we were out in the elements as one clear trying to get ahead as a first down. That's a good one. Good little run right there, first down. Rosie for a, another boxer. First down. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. First and 10 for the boxers. Scored a touchdown on their first drive of the second half. To do the same on their second. Clock ticking down. It might be one final play. We're going to have a timeout called by the boxers with nine seconds to go in the third quarter. That's why I, one of the reasons I love calling games here at Marciano Stadium, we've got a dedicated window for us in the press box where from here over is Brockton Community Access. Everyone knows the rules. Home Everyone field advantage. Home field advantage. Your PCA, we've got lots of equipment. The Enterprise, the Spark, the WAT, the they're all on the other side of the press box. The Gold, the Herald, doesn't matter if the big boys come. This is our window. This is our bar. Nine seconds left. <laughs> we hear some painful renditions of Bill Joey. Well, the way you put it, it's like this is our bar. This is our place. Give to Pierre. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Pockets triple zeros, and we have reached the end of the third quarter. The score remains 9-7 to seven in a battle of the defense this year at Marciano Stadium. Boxers with the ball, and now the weather. As who knows, the next touchdown could win this one. It could. Uh, I mean, you know, bar boxers still have possession of this football. Um, they're, doing, they're doing better than the first half, that's for sure, uh, with you know, ball possession, you know, holding on to that football and running. You know, Jose Montero Jr. has been doing a way better job of reading the defense and, you know, picking up more yardage than in the first half. So they've, been, they've made their improvements. You know, now they gotta execute. Now they gotta, you know, get a touch, another touchdown to take the lead. To uh, really, you know, and then let the defense do the rest of the work. I'm not saying CM has a lack of experience, but when it comes to battling the elements, they have a practice block. They're never out in the rain and the wind and the nastiness unless it's a game. And they, there haven't been any this season where it's been that way. Right. You know, that's the advantage of a public school practicing whenever. The screen pass is going to fall incomplete. Intended for Rosen here. And if they pass, it'll bring up third down. This will be third and ten for the boxers. See what kind of play they come up with and trying to convert. It's going to be tough to convert, but we'll see what they got. And with the win here, you got to air it out. We're going, going with the win here. Let's we'll see uh, what kind of formation they have here. With the eye for them. Terry Jr. back to pass, looking long towards the sideline, and intended for Glenn, Darty Glenn, he's got it, and it's going to be a catch and a first down for the boxers. Wow, a huge conversion right there. Big catch, mismatch and coverage right there. That is an atmosphere-changing play for Tejon Glenn Darty. Yeah, that, I mean, that was a huge mismatch in coverage for CM. And we have a timeout. Literally had, by Catholic literally had, he's had six inches over his defender. 
at least. It pays off that he's the starting center of the basketball team. Yeah, well that, that does help. And so it is a first and ten for the boxers. That catch really helped them. You know, now the, now the chances of them coming down, you know, getting at least a field goal, you know, getting at least a score here is, is better than the way it looked like a uh, few plays ago, 3rd and 10. Getting the very dedicated fan section here. Pumped up. You know, Montero Jr. has a really good arm. Nice spiral to it. He's had some real nice gem passes tonight that have been connected. And one must remember, this is only his third game back from Tordes. Yeah. It's pretty impressive that you know, he, he's been making some big runs. He's had a couple of big catches already. And big uh, throws. Give to Pierre. He was unable to find the gap. A progress maybe gives him a gain of about two. One by Pierre for two yards. So we have third down. We'll call it nine. Same formation. Montero and Shotgun back to pass. Looking again for Darty Glenn, and this one's going to be overthrown. And fourth down. Fourth down. The boxers have a kicker who's got a good leg. And he's going with the win. If I was the coach, I just wouldn't trust the field goal here. It'd be about a 45-yard kick. It's very long for high school, but it's with the win. Yeah, I mean, with the win, I mean, yeah, your chances are better, but... I think it will still go right. The way the, way the wind is going, it is not going completely straight as I feel like, but they're going for it right here. Four receivers split to each side. Montero Jr. is going to be caught from behind. Loses the ball, but it went behind him, and the boxers is able to pick it up, but that's going to be a turnover of our downs as the rain has opened up from the heavens yet again. A wonderful day for a walk in the neighborhood, eh? Oh, you, Mr. Rogers. Absolutely. I thought you were Mad Dog Matt Nelson. It is absolutely pouring here once again at Mercy Island Stadium. Shy of 10 minutes to go. CMX leading 9 to 7. Three receivers set. Alfredo and he goes to Tucker. And Tucker is going to be right. And the ball's out. No, I think he was down. Down by down. virtual forward progress being stopped. It's going to be bring about a second down at 12 for the Knights. Three man rush for the boxers. Now the ball 
falls out again. Something tell me, tells me Catholic Memorial is going to go with one of those uh, outside runs, or they're going to try and fool the boxers here. The play action pass, or play action run. Something tells me that. Damn Hawks. 
severe Let's the the box. I'll go on my, my annual rant about how Catholic Conference should be its own yeah, lead, yeah. really. A screen pass. The ball is out. The ball is out. Brock and Recover is charging towards the end zone. And still on his feet to the 20 yard line. And Brock and has taken over. And they're deep in Catholic Memorial territory. Stop. This definitely makes up for it. Huge for the Brockton Boxers. First and ten for the Brockton Boxers from the 20 yard line. They've got four clean shots at the end zone with 6.54 left to go. With the weather, with the rain, with the wind, Brockton with an atmospheric fumble recovery. You have to score here. You have to. It's a must. Here's the receiver seven. Kara Jr., quarterback keeper, trying to the far outside. He's still on his feet, making a couple cuts, still on his feet, all the way down to the seven yard line. And that's where his forward progress is stopped. It'll be a first and goal for the Brockton Boxers. That'll put Brockton first and goal. Well, this is what I'm telling you, Matt. I was telling you earlier in the third quarter that they have to score to take the lead and then let their defense do the job. Their defense is quite capable of doing that. They just need the lead. Their defense will get pumped up by that to just get a win here at home against CM. Huge. To give to Rosen Pierre, charging up ahead, still on his feet. He's within the five and brought down at the three yard line is Rosen Pierre. And the boxers are very close to making this a 13-9 game. Second and goal for the boxers. Hurry up offense. Two receivers on the far side to give to Pierre. Trying to turn the corner, and he's going to be brought down at the nine-yard line. A seven-yard uh, loss for Rosen Pierre. Green is picking up again. Heavens are opening up. Look at the bright side. It could be snow. I think that this was snow. I don't think we would be here right now. One would hope. It. But if there's a football game, BCA Sports is there. It'd be pretty epic to play in the snow and be, be a lower score than this. Maybe still 0 0 if this was snow. We'll start off with the guy who went scuba diving on the sideline, Jacob Hazel. And of course up top, the one, the only, Mike the Postman Simmons. With a, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. Delivering twice on Sundays. Always deliver. And he always reached twice. Always. So it's a third and goal from the eight yard line. Whistles as the referee waddles towards the boxer sideline. Montero Jr. the shotgun yet again. More whistles. And now we have a timeout for Catholic Memorial. And we have a timeout called by Catholic Memorial. 5.36 to go in the fourth quarter. The snap is quite literally taken about 10 minutes of real time for this one play to get off. Oh, it's uh, 
Brockton uh, reassessing what they're going to do here on uh, third and eight. I don't think they have a choice. They're going to feed the rock. They're going to you know, the run here. We're going to play action. Keep it as long as they will charge. Catholic Memorial, you know, reassessing the situation, trying to make a big stop. You know, they may have been a big loss. And, you know, putting that much uh, pressure on the boxers to try and make a field goal and take a lead. So both teams have called the timeout. I'm a double A rule state. You can't call two timeouts before a, another play is snapped. So this one will go off. Jose Montero Jr., the quarterback keeper. He's cutting up field. He's going to take a hit. And he's going to be brought down at the 10 yard line. It'll be a fourth and goal from the 10. What do you think Brockton does here? Are they going to bring out the kicker? Yep, they are bringing out the special teams. I think you have to. Back story for the field goal try for the boxers. I wouldn't even try to fake it here. The boxers have been known to do that in the past. You're close enough, it's about, uh, let's see, it's on the 17. So that makes it about a 27 yard kick. Very manageable with the win. He's going to try to shake it left to, win, to blow it back in. And it's good, and the boxers have a one point lead. Great field goal. Now your defense has to do the job. One point lead, you gotta protect it. Max Tobo with a field goal of 27 yards, and the Boxers have their first lead of the night as they lead the Catholic Memorial Knights by a score of 10 to 9. I want to what we're celebrating right now for the Brockton Boxers. You gotta put your defense out there. You gotta, you gotta really protect this lead. There is four minutes and 46 seconds left. You gotta have a big stop here. Three and out. You get the ball back, you sit on the ball, you run the ball. Kill time. But you gotta have your defense stop. That is key now. But now that the Barton Boxers have a lead. They're gonna squib it here. Although an extra man lining up on the left side, they might try to onside this. They might try to onside this to the left side, they're stacking it up. And now the kicker realizing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try an onside kick here There's though. too many men on the field. So before kicking off, now Brockton's lined up normally. There is a 12th man on the field. A little squib. This is a line drive that is fielded cleanly by a Catholic Memorial. Running into his own blockers and out of bounds at the 32 yard line. And a nice start. Four minutes and 40 and seconds left. In the biggest defense of series of the Brockton Boxer season. You come up here, you come in here. You upset Catholic Memorial. That is a very, very big feat. Really, anyone from the Catholic Conference. If Rockford can defeat them, they go to BC High next week. KC High is going to return to senior quarterback and an absolute beast at running back. Their defense should be feeling good after this effort time. Their defense should be feeling good. Turning the outside and being brought down after a gain of about two. That was a great read on that. You know, they've struggled all game with, you know, Catholic Memorial going on the outside. So the Brockton Boxer sideline is electric right now. There's a flurry of activity, players jumping around, firing the crowd up. This place is live right now. Something to talk about at school on Monday. Trips to the near side. Gofredo in the shotgun, flanked by Keon Tucker back to pass, looking to the near sideline, and the pass is complete and knocked out of bounds right I, at the first down marker. They give him the first down. The refs are generous in this game, they'll probably give him the first down. First down for the 
Knights. Holds it up for first down. Same way the entrance to the near side will receive it to the far side. Tucker flanking go for it. Out now passing save play, and this one is going to fall incomplete. Stops the clock with 3.52 to go. Incomplete pass, opening up second down. CM, put him to bed. Four receiver set, the gift to Tucker. He charges ahead for a game of about seven. Hurry up offense for the Knights. Oh, Stingy with the trips to the near side formation. Gift to Tucker again, and he's going to hit a wall, but keep the legs turning, and that's enough for the Knights first down. That's enough for a first down. 3.22 left in the fourth quarter here. 10-9 the score. Stop. Defense needs a big stop here. A sack. A sack would be nice. Even a pick, a pick would be beautiful. Pass to the far side is going to be complete, cutting back across the middle and being brought down at the 20 yard line. Another first down for the Knights, first and 10 from the Boxer 20 with 2.59 to go. Time out. Time out, Brockton. Boxers are going to call time out. 55 to go. When did the rains continue to fall from the heavens here? What are you thinking with uh, the ball on 20 right now? What are you thinking with the box on the ice? See, yeah, I think you're going to pressure the quarterback. You've got to send much. You've been sending three or four guys in all game. you got to send five. you got to send five in and hope they can break the offensive line before our friend has the opportunity to throw the ball. Break huddle, 2.55 left in the fourth quarter of this one. Now split receivers, we'll see them changing up their formation just a little bit. Fredo with the shotgun, now in motion, he comes to the near side. Low snap handled by Gofredo, he's gonna split right up the middle, he's got some room. He cuts to the outside, and he's got a clear path to the end zone, and he's got a touchdown for the Knights. No flags on the play, and the Knights have a five-point lead.
Nick Alfredo's second touchdown of the day. 2.45 to go. Seattle with the opportunity to make this a six point game. Or seven. They decide to go for two. Off, then he runs right down the Four receiver set, Gafredo pitching out to Tucker, is going to be hit yes. in the backfield. The two point conversion is no good. So, five point edge. It's a lot easier than it seems. Brock has to march down the field and score a touchdown. There's plenty of time to do so. Two minutes and 45 seconds. 15 yep. to 10 to score. But the thing is, defense. Shotgun. He 
gives to Pierre. He cuts up field. There's a gain of about five yards. It'll be third. And we'll call it four. I have a feeling that this one is going to come down to the wire. Clock taking 120 left to go. a tad short and it's disappointing to see him, you know. It'd be awesome to, you know, see a victory here against CM, but you know, close, but no cigar, unfortunately. You know, that, that is, that's very disheartening to see, you know. Coach getting mad, obviously, 
sparge of that football should have been different. Here, Colombo thinking that it was a different spot. Refs obviously disagreeing with that. Thinking the ball's a different spot. And that's tough. And that's tough for the boxers offense right there. Didn't come up. It's a great effort. Great effort on fourth down to try and get that first down, but didn't go in your favor. Came within a foot. Already glad just couldn't get across the line. So final score will be 15 to 10. Uh, see, I don't know what's taking so long here. Why are they taking the time out? Because the game's pretty much over. And all you have to do is come out there and take a knee. I don't know why they're huddling up. This, this is game over. Take a couple of knees and Kevin Moore takes his game. Oh, that's so complicated. Victory formation for the Knights. Yeah, two or something. Quick D for Alfredo will do it again with about 40 seconds remaining. And that'll just about wrap it up. Alfredo with the two Catholic Memorial touchdowns, both on the ground. And a safety for a missed extra point and a safety for the CM Knights. Leads to this score of 15. Jose Montero Jr. with the lone boxer touchdown and Max Tobo with a field goal to account for the boxers 10 points. Alfredo slipping down to the ground with 20 seconds to go. On behalf of Principal Cliff Murray and Athletic Director Kevin Keogh. That'll do it. So we'll this one for coming out tonight. has come to an end as the final the seconds. Final score, the final score, Catholic World 15. The final score, Catholic World 15. The boxers 10. Alex, what did you see that convinces you for the boxers against the big Catholic Conference team in Catholic Memorial? Well, definitely... Uh, you know, it was impressing to see that, you know, they Once kept again, this a game. But, um, you know, there was areas where your defense didn't come up when they needed to. There was other points where your offense, you know, needed to get creative, needed to find different ways of scoring. And they didn't do that either. You know, on both sides of the ball, you know, you came up short. And you could have came out here with a 10-9 or even, you know, they could have put some insurance points on, but unfortunately that wasn't the case tonight. You know, but this is this is a good um, way to eva you know evaluate yourself against the Catholic teams. You know, against Catholic Memorial, and you know next week you're going to go to BC High at Harvard, and you know stack up against them. But I, you know, I think that'll be a different story as well. Um, Weather-wise, we'll see. You know, you got Hurricane Maria coming in. Who knows if it's going to be raining next week again, and this weather could affect. But the weather came into a big effect this game. That's why it was so close. And yet, you know, so far away for the boxers, and they just just out of reach from having a big win here. Well, you mentioned next week the boxers travel up to Havid to play BC High. We'll have that game for you on Brockton Community Access. The final score for Marciano Stadium again. The Catholic Memorial Knights 15, the Brockton Boxers 10. They move to 1-2 and two on the year and look to get back on the winning ways against BC High next week. For everyone here at BCA Sports, our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons, my broadcast partner, the wishbone himself, Alex Wish. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.